please tell us who you are and your, and your involvement in IPv6 and the Internet of Things. I'm Xavi Vilajosana. I'm a visiting professor at UC Berkeley. I, co I come from Barcelona in Spain. I'm a professor there at the Open University of Catalonia. And I came here to Berkeley to work on a project called OpenWSN.org where we implement an Internet of Things protocol stack using open standards and we try to contribute on the development of standardization activities for the IPv6 or for the IoT, in fact. So I'm implementer of 154E, I'm implementer of 6LOPEN, I'm implementer of UDP and co-op on constrained devices, and I work as well on the ITF, uh, especially on the 60s working group, to develop or to fill the gap that on these missing parts that I explained on my presentation. Yeah. Uh, there are there are missing gaps, I think, and, and I like what you I like how you said it. So you said the IoT stack. So what does the IoT stack consist of? So we focus mainly on industrial scenarios, and these scenarios have some differences from uh, you know uh, home scenarios uh, mm -hmm. because reliability is very important. So uh, when industrial uh, uh, partners want to deploy a network, they want that all packets arrive because sometimes this is crucial information. So, uh, what was the question? Sorry. So the question was um, the Internet of Things. On the Internet of Things, it seems like, you know, specifically if we look at the ITF, they work in very strong in compartments. But what seems to be missing is something that integrates everything. It's yeah. very much an integration play. And when you said the Internet of Things stack, is yeah. that kind of looking at all, well, uh, yeah, bringing together all the different standard, standards? Yeah, so the, we focus on 15.4 technologies and especially 15.4e because it provides this reliability. And the missing part is that uh, it's not yet IPv6 enabled. So there, it's, uh, it can be IPv6 enabled, but there's some missing gaps that vendors uh, today are, are implementing themselves using uh, their own technologies. And the problem of that is that uh, then when you are a big customer and you want to buy that technology, but then you want to change to another one, you have to change everything. Right. So there's a big problem here. So at the ITF, what we want to do is standardize that, define what are these missing gaps and provide standard ways to deal with the configuration of that networks. Okay, so the missing gaps, and that is taken care of where in the ITF? It's on the 60s working okay, group. So it's the yeah. and, that, and that's it. And when you say the IPv6 or the IoT stack, you're talking about kind of the whole from layer one to layer yeah, seven? So, well, we, we talk about 15.4 uh, as a physical layer, 15.4e okay. e as a Mac layer, which is an amendment of the 15.4. Then uh, the six top layer that will be defined on, uh, on the 60s working group. And on top of that, we have 6LOPAN that provides IPv6 to these uh, constrained devices, plus UDP on top, DTLS if we want security, and co-op. And let, let's say that I'm uh, a developer, a, a company, and we're looking at developing an industrial Internet of Things. We're just approaching an Internet of Things uh, uh, service or application. What's a good place to start? Well, so the first thing is that you have to understand uh, the needs of the market and you have to figure out what kind of services and communications you want to provide. Yeah. So, and if you want reliability, you have to go for uh, and low power. You have to go for uh, 1540 technologies, uh, TSEH technologies, and you have always to put IPv6 on them because then you make them indep independent on the radio technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how far do you think it is bef be before IPv6 becomes, I guess? It's not so far. It's no. not so far. Uh, I think in a couple of years uh, now, we, we there's some vendors selling IPv6 technologies using uh, these underlying uh, deterministic Mac layers, mm. but uh, they still not interoperate because right. there's this missing gap. But uh, in uh, in a couple of years or in a year and a half, we will see more and more vendors uh, selling that technology. Now, what's the missing gap that's missing right now? What so. Is it? The 1540 uh, Mac layer requires a schedule because it's a TDMA, it's a, it's a deterministic Mac layer. And uh, the way this schedule is built and managed is not defined. So vendors implement their own way. Okay, and for information, uh, which, type of, which vendors are involved right now doing this type of work? So uh, there's uh, DAS Networks, which is a linear technology company. There's uh, another company called Nibis. 
There's, uh, there's different open source projects. Uh, Texas Instruments is also involved. Yeah. Uh, there's our project, openwsn.org, which is open source and okay. provides implementation all of this protocol stack. And uh, I know Contiki is starting to work on that. So there's many, many attraction. Oh, nice. And so if people wanted to read more about your work, which, where should they go on the internet? They can look at openwsn.org okay. and they will find all the information. Well, very good. Thank you for the interview. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.